And finally, after he was stabbed, and when he got, he became conscious after he was stabbed, the first thing he asked, did the believers pray Al-Fajr? Because he was stabbed while he's getting ready to lead the prayers. The one thing he was worried about, did they pray Al-Fajr? And then after this, he asked his son Abdullah, ask Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha if she would accept that I get buried beside the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He asked for the approval of Sayyida Aisha. And she said yes. And why does he ask for the approval? Because as we know Sayyida Aisha said, when Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was buried, I will go to visit him in the grave without my hijab. And when my father was buried beside him, I still could go and visit him without a hijab. But when Omar died and he was buried with a Rasul, I wore a hijab to visit, subhanAllah. So here, after this, he told his son Abdullah, after I die, go and ask her again. She might have been embarrassed because I am Amir al-Mu'mineen, but maybe when I die, she changed her mind, subhanAllah. Just to make sure that it's accurate and it's fair, subhanAllah. And what's his advice to those who's carrying his, um, walking in his funeral? He said, rush me to my grave. So when they asked him why, he said, because if I did good deeds and I'm going to Al-Jannah, I want to go there quickly. And if I did bad deeds and I'm going to hell, get rid of me quickly. It's not fair for you to carry me all this time. Subhanallah, he's thinking of the believers. <clears throat> and then, subhanallah, Amal al Khattab said, if I hear that everybody going to Al-Jannah and one person is left behind, I would think it's me. And if I hear that everybody is going to Al-Nar and one person is left behind, I will think it might be me. Subhanallah. So he thinks that he has a, uh, well, could be left behind or he could be the only one to go to Al-Jannah. And the question here, why cannot be... A lot of people ask, why can't we be like Abu Bakr and Omar? And this question was asked to Ali ibn Abi Talib and was asked to Harun al-Rashid and they gave back the same answer. They told him, why aren't you great leaders like Abu Bakr and Umar? The answer was, give me people that like the people that Abu Bakr and Umar ruled and then we can be like Abu Bakr and Umar. Because the people were good people. As we said in the time of Abu Bakr, people did not dispute and did not try to uh, desert from each other or fraud each other, subhanAllah. So it's easier for the Khalifa to rule. So give me people like the people of Abu Bakr and Omar. So if we want Abu Bakr and Omar to come among us and lead us, we should start changing ourselves to be like the people of Abu Bakr and Omar. Subhanallah. And finally, Omar ibn al-Khattab, one time as he was walking around Mecca, he found an old lady, a blind old lady. And he helped clean her small house or her room or whatever you, uh, you, you call it. And told her, I will come every day to help you. But when he came the next day, it was already clean and food was prepared. And the following day, the same. He wanted to know who is taking the sawab from him. Who he had thought he found a great avenue for sawab, and yet somebody has taken it away. So he said, I hid the following day and looked and I found it was Abu Bakr al-Khalifa coming to serve this lady and clean her house, subhanAllah, serving the poor. So it's not only to give, it's having to do yourself and be part of it to feel. A lot of leaders think by just ordering somebody to do something good or whatever, they've done their part. But Omar and Abu Bakr teaches it is our own responsibility to do it, subhanAllah. And that's why Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, when he became al-Khalifa, uh, an older lady said, Abu Bakr used to milk my, uh, my sheep for me. Now that he is al-Khalifa, he will not do it. And he told her, no, I will still do it. SubhanAllah. Helping the people, being part of the people, that's the role of the leader. But the, our role is to become like the people they ruled. Until we become like the people they ruled, don't expect and don't blame the leader to be the way they are. So we change ourselves. إن الله لا يغير ما بقوم حتى يغير ما بأنفسهم. الله سبحانه وتعالى does not change what is with people since they change yourself. However, somehow we were convinced if we change our leaders, all will be well. And we see the Muslim countries where the leaders were changed and things are going from bad to worse. Why? Because maybe they were not the problem. Yes, they're part of it. But the real issue is have we changed ourselves? 
Have we accepted the responsibility that we are responsible as much as them and we have a responsibility to carry? Most of us don't want. Most of us just want the thing to blame somebody else. Alhamdulillah, we sleep at night well because I have a good job and I'm making good money and I'm making, I have a nice house and a nice car. But it is the leader's faults rather than change ourselves and give a little. And this is what Islam is about.